The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is DJ, and this is an RC servo. They're used in things like planes, helicopters, drones, and my personal favorite, animatronics. Now, one of the things that I always need to figure out is exactly how to control my servos when I install them and also whether or not they're working properly. So I'm gonna build a device that makes doing that a heck of a lot easier. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So, to explain what this build is going to be and why it even matters, we need to talk about servos. Now, this video is not a general introduction to what a servo is and the way they're constructed and how to use them, but we do have to provide some amount of context so that my build makes sense. So, this is a cheap analog servo, and it has three connections. We're only going to be talking about the cheap stuff that most of us use. So nothing with feedback, no smart servos, just cheap three wire servos that have connections for power, ground, and a signal. So this signal is determined, let's go over here. So let's say I have a 500 uh, microsecond pulse width or a 2500 microsecond pulse width. So if I have different uh, pulse widths sent on the signal line of this servo, it will determine how far it will move along its range of motion. Now, most of the cheap servos you find are going to have a range of motion anywhere from, you know, 90 degrees all the way to, well, some of the cheap ones do do 270. But for the most part, you're gonna get ones that operate at a 180 degree range of motion. So by varying the pulse width, we can change how far along that servo can move. Now, all of the cheap servos mention specifications that are nice, perfect degree increments. The reality is that's not what you get. You get what you pay for, and if you paid $5 for a servo, you're getting $5 worth of value, maybe even less, maybe more. But in order to figure that out, I want to build what is essentially a servo evaluator that allows me to dial in exactly the pulse ranges for the servo and also allow me to constrain them so that when they're installed in an assembly like an animatronic character, I can move them, uh, move multiple servos at the same time. Now, there are already servo testers out there like this or this, but they're junk. I mean, they work fine for what they are, but they're testers. I need more control than just the full range of motion. Most importantly, when I install a servo into uh, a character, yes, I can set it to a known position before I install it, but let's say I nudge it just a little bit, I no longer know what position it's at. With the cheap guys, there's no feedback. So yes, the servo itself is a closed loop system, but for my control purposes, I don't know where it's at. So I need to figure that out and I don't want to mess around in code. I just want a standalone device that can set positions and show them for me. And most importantly, when I install something, I rarely want the full range of motion. Sometimes that's useful, sometimes not. Most of the time, I really just want to control a particular arc length, you know, let's say it's 30 degrees, and I want to be able to play with that um, without doing a lot of extra setup. Like I said, less software, more hardware, more building things. And this is not something I'm aware of any cheap servo testers, uh, aware of a feature in any cheap servo testers, so that's why I want to build this. All right, let's talk about all the perks that are gonna go into this fancy build. First up, we've got everyone's favorite, the five volt, 10 amp power supply, TDK Lambda. It's got more than enough current 
more than enough juice to power all of our hungry, hungry hippos. And for our main processor, oh wait, let me go back. I almost forgot about the uh, power entry module. It is just the sexiest way to put an IEC connector into your project so you don't just have a dangly power cord sticking out the back. No one wants a dangly power cord. But now on to the main event. That's right, the Arduino Mega. It's old, it's reliable, and it's just beautiful. And this is going to be the heart of our build. Now, we need some kind of fancy user interface, and I love little screens. So today's little screen is an ILI9340 uh, TFT LCD. Um, nice, crisp, and simple. Also, another old part that I just want to retire. So we're gonna retire that with the Arduino Mega. They'll have a lovely life together in their old age. Now for the rest of the user interface, we're gonna have the rotary encoder because I want a simple way to dial in the pulse width ranges for each channel of this device. Now for the absolute uh, ranges of those pulse widths, I'm going to use potentiometers, classic 10K panel mount, can't beat it, so you better join them, potentiometers. And we also, well, I also want buttons. Panel mount buttons are not very clicky, but they get the job done. You can press them, and then they close an electrical connection. I don't know what else you want out of a button, but there's, there's more, there's always, there's always more, because each channel will have its own LED. Glowy, beautiful, and a current limiting resistor. Can't have too much current or all the light juice explodes out the tip of this bad boy right here. Um, let's put this together into some sort of assemblage that we can use. Okay, so let's walk through the uh, schematic for this servo evaluator. So first things first, we've got our, ooh, that's a terrible sine wave. Um, AC source coming in. We've got our AC to DC converter. It's kind of a weird way to draw that. Don't judge me. So now we've got our five volts, plus five volts, because it goes above the five naturally. So we've got that. Now we've got our Arduino Mega. Mega. Arduino, so big, also needs that VCC coming in. This will connect to an encoder, which I'm disappointed there's not really a standard encoder symbol, but whatever. So we've got two channels, A and B, and then also ground connection. I'm just gonna draw it times two because I'm not gonna draw it twice. You get the idea. We will have a potentio meter, that's pretty, I'm pretty sure that's how they're drawn. So this will go up to uh, five volts again, and this will go down to ground, bup, 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 bup. and we'll also have our buttons, button one, boop, boop, to ground, and last but not least, each uh, channel will have its own, I'll try a little bit better on the resistor this time, flawless and uh, each channel have its own LED, so we know uh, which one we're selecting. Oh, and don't forget, don't forget the most important thing, LCD, that's, that's it. We'll go back up to five volts. Everything needs power because I was thinking about SPY, the SPY interface. This is our schematic. We'll of course have four times the LEDs, four times the buttons, and four times the potentiometers. But this is all we need to make our cool gadget. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff?
And here it is, the completed servo evaluator. I'm leaving the side panel off just so you can get a quick peek inside. Normally I would do a CAD segment that explains the design, but this is very utilitarian and I think it speaks for itself. I've just got some 3D printed side pieces that are basically um, mounting points for all of the plates. So it's very straightforward, just plain rectangular laser cut wooden plates. These could be 3D printed too, so if you don't have a laser cutter, it's not, uh, not terribly important. But uh, whenever I'm printing flat things, or I, I should say, I don't like printing flat things, so I'd rather just uh, cut that out of wood much faster and just 3D print the complicated pieces um, like this uh, bezel frame, I don't know what you call it. So this has the headers for all of these servo channels. So you can see we've got four channels. Um, the LEDs for indicating each channel, our encoders for setting the limits of the channels, the potentiometers for driving the relative positions of the servos, and buttons for selecting the channel. And of course, uh, our power entry module. I could add a power switch, but it's not critically important. I'm trying to keep a, a simple, straightforward build. All right, let me go ahead and plug this thing in. Where is my power cable? I found it. All right, plug this in. Should turn on. So refresh rate is abysmal. There's a reason why I don't like using the Arduino or the 16 megahertz processors or the AVR, 8-bit AVRs anymore. So let's take a look at the user interface. It's pretty bare bones and I've kept it simple. So we've just got our channel label, the minimum range value, our maximum range value, our current servo position, and just a little uh, graphical slider um, illustrating the servo's position. So if I dial that in, oh, this refresh rate is killing me, but it does the job. So um, the yellow range shows the current uh, adjusted range and the blue just blocks out um, those ranges. So now I don't have, it's a little bit hard to see on camera, the uh, absolute positions of the potentiometers um, updating on the display because it is just so sluggish. Um, but you can see that every time I change uh, channels, we can see these new servo positions, just channel, well, channel zero, one, two, and three, because computers start at zero, so I start at zero. And we can just adjust the limits for each of those channels. But I suppose we should actually plug in a servo or four because this is a servo evaluator after all. So let's go ahead and do that. So nothing magical, potentiometers, moving servos. And let's go to this first one here. So let me constrain it a lot. Let's dial that down. Oh wait, I'm on the wrong channel. I'm changing channel four, I wanna change channel one. Let's make that narrow. And now we have a really tiny range, which now I can way more accurately play with things that are in place because sometimes I only want that tiny little range of motion but I still want to futz about with a full range of a potentiometer's, I don't know, our range of motion. I don't have, I don't have the words today, forgive me folks. And of course I can drive them all at once. There's no reason I shouldn't be able to, but this will prove to be very, very useful. All right, that's all I've got for today. Obviously, this is a very straightforward build, nothing too complicated going on, but projects don't have to be too complicated to be useful. And this is definitely gonna serve me very well in the future. Obviously, there's a bunch of things that could be improved. 
um, I don't know, first off, maybe uh, responsiveness of the screen. Although I do want to keep this Arduino Mega in there because I don't want to use it in other things. So I don't know, I might just live with it. Um, it would be nice too, I could have it ha save presets so I could have different uh, configurations and just load those up from the EEPROM built in. Um, but other than that, uh, maybe a power switch too. And other than that, this is exactly what I wanted and I hope it will be useful uh, to you in some way. As always, you can find out more at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. Connect with me there, find the CAD, the code, the parts, whatever you want, and maybe you will make your own servo evaluator too.